Welcome to One Does Not Simply Serve Models to Production, a talk on productionizing machine learning models reliably and at scale. My name is Riccardo Albertazzi, I'm a software engineer at Bending Spoons, and today I'll present the work of me and my colleague Lorenzo Migliorino. First of all, let's clarify what we mean by model serving. Uh, AI researchers often come out with new amazing models, however, in order to transform these models into a product, you need to let users be able to call your model with some inputs and obtain the model predictions. Model serving is basically the last stage in the development of machine learning models, which concentrates on making the models available into a production tool that respects software engineering best practices. A robust and optimized model serving tool has to solve several challenges, uh, some of which come from building traditional software engineering tools and some of which are specifically related to an application that deals with machine learning models. Uh, I reported here some of them, uh, explaining them, uh, explain quickly what they are, uh, and then later I will explain how we solve them. Uh, first of all, modularization. Uh, basically, we want to keep the machine learning code as agnostic as possible from the infrastructure, uh, as to allow the AI researchers and AI engineers to focus as much as possible on the machine learning part without worrying about the environment in which that code will run. Uh, second, fault tolerance. We want our system to continue operating properly in the event of failures of one or more of its components. Uh, then costs. Uh, costs well, are very important in a model serving tool since machine learning models typically need a lot of resources, uh, CPU, RAM, GPU, as you name it, uh, you know, to be able to return a prediction in a short time. Uh, you know, we want to keep costs down as much as possible, basically. Uh, then uh, resources, which is, you know, the ability to find the resources, in particular the GPUs, and utilize them as much as possible. Uh, observability, uh, so we want to understand at any time what is happening within our systems so that we can better understand the behavior and performance of our system and quickly act when there's problems. Uh, then auto-scaling, uh, so we want our infrastructure to scale according to traffic so that we can run prediction as fast as possible while keeping costs down during low traffic. And finally, model composition. Uh, so typically a, a single user prediction may be composed by several predictions and steps that are executed by different models running on different machines. Uh, so basically our infrastructure needs to support this kind of distributed environment. Uh, most open source model serving frameworks uh, uh, have models behind a HTTP web server that can be called as any traditional backend. However, this approach has quite some limitations. Uh, so HTTP communication should be short-lived by design uh, at most some seconds. Uh, this doesn't work well with machine learning models that could take tens of seconds or even minutes to return an answer. Uh, second, HTTP requests are meant to be processed as soon as they come. Uh, in other words, there is no way for the server to delay the processing of a request while it's busy with the previous ones, uh, you know, if not by rejecting the request with an error. Uh, also, spikes of requests would let the server go down. Uh, HTTP works well for one-to-one -one communication, and this does not work well when designing features that are deployed in a distributed environment where the computation is spread among several different servers. Uh, these are the reasons why we decided to go for, for another approach, which, which is an event-driven approach, uh, in which clients publish messages into queues and servers consume these messages at, at their own speed as soon as they finish processing the previous request. Uh, you know, once finished, the servers reply with a success message on another queue, uh, which is consumed back by the original clients. The, and you know, basically, this design allows us to solve all limitations of an HTTP-based framework. We finally came up with this architecture for Arduino Serving, which is deployed on Google Cloud and currently runs as the AI backend of our photo and video editing apps. Uh, I understand this architecture may sound complicated at first, and that's why we'll go through each part step by step in the next slides. First of all, modularization. Uh, we deploy our code into Docker containers, which, if you don't know, are some sort of lightweight virtual machines that can be run in an isolated and reproducible environment. Uh, these containers run on Google Cloud virtual machines, uh, and in order to achieve modularization, we created two containers that run on the same VM and communicate with each other. So the first one, uh, the one on the right, is 
uh, its components solely responsible for the machine learning part. It is the one that runs prediction and uses GPUs to process such requests. Um, this container is developed by AI researchers and AI engineers and just needs to take an input or return an output without knowing anything else about the infrastructure on which it will run. The second one is a sidecar component that is responsible for all the infrastructure related tasks, such as communicating with the input and output queues, downloading and uploading data uh, to external blob storage and driving the autoscaler. Um, this component is developed by backend engineers uh, who don't need to know anything about the internals of the machine learning model. Uh, fault tolerance, how do we achieve it? Uh, so basically when there's a failure on processing a request on one machine that could happen for any reason, such as you know, machine getting out of memory, out of disk, or simply you know, the code that ended up in an undesired state, uh, a request is retried by the message broker on other machines. Uh, if a machine is unable to process a request for a certain amount of time, the machine is then shut down and replaced by a new machine. Uh, you know, this process is called auto-healing. Uh, then regarding cost of resources, basically we are able to keep costs down by using spot or you know, uh, otherwise said preemptible virtual machines and GPUs. Uh, spot VMs are normal VMs that the cloud provider, uh, Google in this case, gives you at a much lower cost, uh, you know, discounted from 70 up to 90% of the leasing price, with the caveat that the VM may be taken back by Google uh, whenever there is a few availability of resources in a data center and, you know, other clients are willing to pay more for those resources. Uh, this makes our infrastructure much cheaper, but also potentially much less reliable as from one moment to the other, we could lose half of our processing power, uh, lots of requests would get queued up and users would start waiting for their predictions for a long time. In order to deal with that, we deployed Orion serving in several different cloud regions. In this example, you see three of them uh, as to minimize the chance the low spot GPU availability in one region can affect the availability of our tool. Uh, this is also orchestrated by a strong auto-scaling policy uh, that is able to understand when machines are getting preempted in one region and turn on as soon as possible other VMs in other regions to keep serving traffic as quick as possible. We are able to observe the proper functioning of Orion serving through several software engineering tools. Uh, first one, one is logging. So our code produces insightful logs that we can see and query from within Google Cloud. Then error reporting. So every time our code raises unexpected exceptions, uh, the error is reported on Sentry, uh, which is a third party error reporting platform, uh, from which we can see the stack trace of each error and how many times each error is appearing. Then we have monitoring. Uh, our code produces metrics such as latency, number of processor requests, number of messages in queue, uh, GPU utilization that we can plot on live dashboards on Grafana. Uh, it's a popular open source tool for building dashboards. And finally, we can create alert rules on top of the metrics that we monitor so that we can quickly be alerted when there's something wrong going on such as you know, the CPU usage being too high or the request being queued up for too long. Um, basically, this allows us to quickly react to production issues. We use the Google Cloud capabilities to perform auto-scaling, but we drive the Google Autoscaler with a custom metric that we design to measure how much time each worker is occupied in doing interesting stuff. Uh, so the Autoscaler basically tries to keep the worker's utilization to a constant value and as you can see, this results in the number of machines going up and down during the day according to traffic. Uh, we drive all machines in all regions with the same utilization metric. Uh, this means that if lots of spot VNs are preempted in one region, as you can see in the dashboard for uh, you know, US West 4, the orange line uh, at around 3 p.m., the average utilization of all machines basically will start to go up and this will lead the autoscaler to ask to the other regions to turn on more machine so that the situation can be stabilized. And finally, all these VMs containing machine learning models are orchestrated by other components, which are the real entry points of Orion serving. Uh, when a request comes in, uh, an orchestrator creates a workflow of tasks that is spread among several different machines and coordinates the dependencies between these tasks, uh, such as starting one task only when another task has been completed. Uh, this workflow orchestration tool is totally agnostic from the specific machine learning being run on each machine and can be adapted to any graph of operations that needs to be executed. 
Uh, this is the backbone of organ serving and it's very powerful. To give a general sense of the scale at which organ serving works, I'll show you some numbers regarding the image enhancement tasks of Remini, or one of the apps that uses organ serving as AI backend. Uh, so we serve more than 12 million requests every day, uh, dealing with a request rate that goes up to 200 requests per second and goes down to 100 requests per second over the day. Um, also, we are able to do this reliably uh, thanks to our auto scaling that you know helps us to keep the latency cost constant uh, while keeping costs down as much as possible. Um, we perform lots of A-B testing. In fact, we have tens of different model versions uh, deployed at the same time. Uh, and this is where the orchestration greatly helps us. Uh, and finally, we deal with peaks of more than you know 500 machines and GPUs deployed on cloud on you know five Google Cloud regions. You know just to give you an idea of the magnitude of the, uh, of the tool. Finally, uh, what's next for organ serving? Um, in terms of improving the utilization of the, of the VMs, we want to implement request batching, which would allow us to exploit the parallelization of the GPU even more. Request batching basically waits a short time to batch multiple requests together into one on the GPU, uh, exploiting its uh, you know, parallelization capability. Uh, this may come at a small latency increase, but it would definitely increase the, the general throughput of our machines, uh, reducing our costs even more. However, we believe that most of the unexplored value comes in what is right before the model serving part. In particular, we want to build an automatic model testing gate that allows us to quickly run samples of images on top of a newly developed model and compare them with the results of the production model by producing you know, some sort of diff between them. Um, this has the goal to prevent pushing to production models that contain bugs or give low quality predictions for some inputs. Uh, finally, we want to integrate organ serving with a model registry which is a place that catalogs all developed models in one place so that it's possible to get a quick overview of which models are in production, which models are soon to end up in production, and where these models come from, uh, such as you know, where, what they were trained on, what data they were trained on, uh, what was their loss, and so on. Also, it would be very cool for this catalog to simply click a button, you know, like put in production to take a given model create the necessary infrastructure in organ serving and make it available in one click. Uh, that was it. Thank you very much for your time.